Morning guys, Sean here from Hammerhead. Thought I'd jump on here this morning and do a video about some information that we came across lately. Very powerful stuff. This is a game changer, what I'm going to tell you about today. First off, I'd like to offer my prayers to uh, the folks down in the United States right now in Iowa and other places that are going through horrendous loss with a series of tornadoes that are ripping their lives apart down there. Uh, it's terrible stuff. We certainly pray for those folks and hope that uh, things get sorted out as best they can. <clears throat> anyway, what I'm going to talk to you about today is something that uh, has plagued us uh, people that are living in the private for quite a while. And it's the fact that you go into court and uh, through a process called assumption and presumption, which is how the courts operate, they presume that you're the legal name, you're the name on the driver's license, the thing that they can act on, that thing that was created fraudulently by them uh, via the birth certificate. There's never really been an easy way <clears throat> to shake that presumption other than to go in by special appearance and just clearly state that I am a living man, uh, that you know I am not a legal person, I am a man. The problem is, is a lot of the courts, uh, they just basically railroad you and continue to move on the legal person when, while you're there. So there is a remedy for that. <clears throat> and this remedy is called assumed name. Anytime you, you're a corporation, which the legal person is, or a business, or anything else, and you want to do business in any state, or province, or country, in a name other than your legal name, you have to do what's called an assumed name <clears throat> uh, form. And out of all the states in the United States, there's only one state that does it correctly, and it's the state of Minnesota. They do uh, an assumed name um, uh, documentation where you can basically fill in their paperwork, mail it off, I think there's a small fee. I'll include all the links in the description for all this, by the way. We know this works because we have a friend in the United Kingdom that's doing this right now. And it works in court as well. So basically what's happening is, I'll read a little bit to you um, how this guy found this out. <clears throat> There's a man called Douglas Joseph. And he goes on to explain that uh, you need permission to use that name in commerce, what's called a assumed name certificate, and be able to defend it in court as a man and not a legal fiction. The first thing you have to understand is what a legal name is. A legal name is only used in the context of commerce, so it's business, right? That's why when you get pulled over on the side of the road, the officer asks for your driver's license because he wants to contract with you. He's looking to create joinder. It's business. <clears throat> Walmart's a legal name. Bank of America is a legal name. Starbucks is a legal name. And your name as well is a legal name. It's a fiction that they created. You, they consider you to be a corporation. Although you're, they're also considered to be a dead entity, not a live living man. So what you do <clears throat> is you get this assumed name documentation. You, figure, you, um, you file it. And you don't get back a certificate, but what you get back is basically the ability to separate your living flesh and blood man from the legal entity and what's called a name holder slash CEO of the legal name. That doesn't mean you own it. It just means that you have control over it in commerce. So in other words, you can control everything about it. So if the government's trying to take your property from you, he's not going to take it from you, the living flesh and blood man. He's going to try and take it from the legal business entity, the name, the corporation. So what this form does, as a name holder, you can maintain the name as a separate entity. So you're a man and you're also in control of this, although you're not it. Um, <clears throat> so there's no, there's nothing they can move on. They have no ability to move on anything because you're, you have the rights to use that assumed name. You can contract or not contract with them. And now you have a process where you have a re have that name registered so you are in full control of it. And it's something that the courts cannot ignore. This has all been run by a, le a lawyer and he was telling uh, my friend that uh, this is a valid deal. There's nothing the courts can do about any of this. So basically, <clears throat> 
again, Minnesota, only state that in, in the union that uh, will separate the name properly. They'll separate your legal name from the flesh and blood man. So you can do business in the legal name, but still be known and, and recognized legally as, as a flesh and blood man. All the other states call you an owner, not a name holder and CEO. Do some research on what a name holder is right and what a CEO is it doesn't mean you own that legal fiction that they created on the birth certificate they own that but because you're the named on that document you have the ability to register that and when you register it with the folks in Minnesota you become the name holder and the CEO of that legal name which means you have full control of how that is used in commerce or not used in commerce so they cannot move against that, right? Um, <clears throat> you're, you're, you're signing on behalf of the registered legal name. So when you sign documents, you don't sign your name the usual way. You have to because you've been accustomed to signing it that way. What you have to do is you have to sign it um, in a different way, in a non-living legal fiction way. So in other words, um, you basically would have say your name is Thomas Elliot Smith you would put Smith lowercase comma Thomas Elliot okay that's how you would sign that in other words the living man who is in control of that legal entity I know it sounds uh, confusing and it is so uh, the PDF format <clears throat> files I give you in the description you better do some homework and start doing some reading on it we're gonna do a video here soon on how to fill these forms out which is going to be very uh, very helpful I'm sure to a lot of people so that's powerful stuff so basically you've, you've separated yourself from the fiction so they can't do anything about it okay they can't move on you as the man the living flesh and blood man and now they cannot move on you as the legal person because you have control over that you've registered and as the named on that document you've gone and registered that now so now the state or the province or the government or whoever is trying to move on you cannot move on you because you have control of that that's power guys and the um, the implications of that are if you think about it are huge you can now go go and open bank accounts with full control of that name um, it's limitless really what you can do with it now and again, this isn't hearsay. This is all on first-hand knowledge, okay? We have people that are using this now and have used it in court, and it works. Okay, I'm not going to show you their court documents or anything else, but believe me, it works. It's just another tool that if you get dragged into their de facto court, you can use to protect yourself. And that's at the end of the day, that's what we ultimately want, is we want to be left the hell alone. And this is just one good way of doing it. Right, so <clears throat> if you're ever been wondering as the le as the living man in court why they've been ignoring you, there's two reasons. There's a bunch of reasons, but the main two are this: you have no claim before that court. So if you haven't put a claim in prior to your special appearance, you don't have any standing in there. And in other words, they can't see you at all, even as a man without a claim. But they certainly can't see you as a man without any sort of claim in. The second reason is because of assumption and presumption. They're assuming that you're the legal name. And you don't, you don't rebut that presumption, right? And living men and women do not have any standing in a legal court because they're not legal. They're lawful. They're flesh and blood. And most courts don't even want to deal with that. The minute you tell them you're there by a man by special appearance, the judge normally just freaks right out. And they're either going to do one of two things. They're going to put a court date for later in the year, trying to gain jurisdiction over you. They're going to drop it or dismiss it, which you want it to be dissolved, not dismissed. Because if it's dismissed, it means they can bring it back at a future date. Dissolved means it's stricken from the record forever. The matter's settled. And, or they, they will um, try and move on the legal person while you're standing right there. They may even go so far as to issue a warrant for the legal person's arrest. And a friend of mine had that happen to him, and what he did is he surrendered the birth certificate right there. He goes, uh, Judge, I believe, or Bill, the judge, I believe this is what you're looking for. 
his birth certificate. This is the entity you're, you, you're looking for. And he threw it up to the, to the judge. He didn't like that at all. So anyway, that's all I get to show you for now. <clears throat> Read the documents I sent. And of course, we could use some help, guys. If you have any extra funds available, you can help Gordy and I go to court this week. We're going Wednesday. Uh, we would appreciate it. Um, it's a long trip up there. It's uh, almost six hours each way. And, uh, you know, plus not to mention uh, the, the, the paperwork from the CCC. We have to update our video streaming services. Um, we need to get to better word processing equipment and... Um, we have to get Canva Pro is what we use to create the documents and whatnot, and all that costs money, and, and you know we don't really have it. So, anything you could you could spare to help out would be greatly appreciated. Um, but in any way, um, any case, we're doing this uh, for non-selfish reasons. We're doing it because we want to help folks. We generally do. So read this documentation and study it. And this is powerful. I'm telling you, this is the ticket. This is the ticket to be separate your flesh and blood man woman body from that legal entity so in other words they can't put inflict fines on you they can't put duties on you obligations none of that you can blow the lid right off of this thing with, with these papers and just as a side note when you get a membership to the ccc common law court of canada one of these assumed name forms is in your documentation uh, package for your bond so you can operate your private car on the road to protect you. It's like insurance, the, a bond. The first page of it is the assumed name form, which will be filled out. So you're going to get it anyway in your package. <clears throat> anyway, that's all I got for today. Peace out, guys. Wish us luck at court. And uh, we're going to do our best, and we're going to try and get you some live footage in there if we can. If not... We're going to try and get footage in either way so you guys can see what the process is like here in Nova Scotia. And it differs almost everywhere, but peace.